Uh, we are all set. Let me know. You're all set. Have a good meeting. Thank you. Thank you. We are calling to order the meeting of the Secret Zoning Board of Appeals for this Thursday, February 15th, 2024, at 7 p.m. in the Select Board Hearing Room and at Town Hall, uh, at Town Hall and we will go via Zoom. Secret Zoning Board of Appeals is committed to providing an environment of respect during meetings. We ask all members to interact in a polite manner, even when there is disagreement. We value the participation of our community. And we want all participants, including marginalized and minoritized communities, to feel welcome and respected. We ask our community members of all who participate to commit to these standards to support and respect our community. Uh, as we said, uh, this is both uh, in person and via Zoom. The meeting is being recorded and will be available uh, and viewable on City Community Television and Facebook Live. And the recorded meeting will be available the following day on Podcast Channel 9. And uh, with that, we will call, quote unquote, uh, the first application we read you from December 21st, 2023, Catherine East Villain, 326 Central Avenue, Citrus Mass. Uh, we do have someone here on that. Um, yes, I'm here for Tony DeLisi. I'm Matt yeah. Mitchell from Lorber DeLisi here. It's my understanding. Thank you, sir. Jeff indicated to me that he had requested a continuance on this. That is correct. Okay. So we didn't know if you were going to come and speak on that issue. So thank you. Uh, we have a request for continuance until the April meeting. Is that right? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so with that, we will, uh, uh, I will make a motion that this be continued for the April meeting. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks for having me. Thank you, sir. We'll see you in a little bit. Yep. Thank you. Um, on the second application, Angela Stout, C uh, Caro, C Yorkland, requesting special permit finding in accordance with NGL Chapter 48, Section 6, and Section 30 of the City Zoning Bylaw, and or any other relief to the Board of Appeals may grant to allow the partial conversion of existing garage to an accessory, accessory dwelling. Name and address for the work. Steve Bjorkman, 861 Main Street, Norwell, Mass. Mr. Bjorkman, I'm going to ask this. Why are you here? And, and the reason I ask it is because um, my understanding is that this is a uh, accessory dwelling, and the you guys have gone to the planning board pursuant to our zoning bylaw to request to uh, to request the accessory dwelling. So what relief are you asking to look from this body that has not already been granted appropriately by uh, my friends? I am here because the lot that is in question has 98.27 feet of frontage yeah. and lot width rather than 100 feet that's required in the district. So this is probably a little easier than the last application I had in front of you guys. I understood. So, so your point being that although they have approved the accessory dwelling in all its, uh, it, it's glory, um, because this is a non-conforming lot as the front frontage and width, you are seeking a special uh, approval, a special yes. permit, as for or, or a fine or a fine. Um, so, uh, in this case. I, I will make this very simple and move to approve and adopt uh, the special permit that has been granted by the planning board for this property. Uh, and I'm finding that the, uh, the fact that this will be built on a lot with 98.27 feet of frontage and, and a 98.27 width lot width um, uh, introduces no new non conformities and uh, to the extent it intensifies any existing non conformities, those are not substantially more than the neighbors. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank I, we didn't take public comment on this because this has already been approved by the planning board. I, I, I will ask, however, did anybody have anything to say about this? I, I apologize for that. No hands up. No hands up and nobody in the room. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, just the public meeting of the planning board. So I think they didn't continue the planning board. There were comments at the planning board, so they were addressed. Right. And, and again, those were addressed. I saw the, the, uh, the opinion and finding the report. Uh, thank you. Awesome. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, third application. 
Adams Equity Partners, uh, LLC, uh, care of Jeff DeLisi, Esquire, Orenburg DeLisi, 28 New Driftway, the special permit finding in accordance with NGL 48 and section 16.2B of the Zoning Bylaws, and or any other relief the board may take a grant to create lot two for property with an existing address on one and two blocks on the three city of maps. Name and address for the record Matt Mitchell from Orange River Delisi in Paris. Gregory Morse, registered engineer, Morse Engineering. Thank you, John. And I, I will say Eli Adams, who's a member of the LLC, is also, I believe, here. He yes, is online. Okay. Awesome. Terrific, gentlemen. So, can you run us through this with visuals? Because we're, we were trying to piece, all of us were trying to piece this together from the plot plan, and it was a little bit difficult to see kind of what's going on and what's happening here. So, well, anyone, either one. Yep. Absolutely. You want to put it up on the screen or I can put the board up? Either one. Is it easier to put it up on the screen? Are you connected to the video? I'm not. No. Okay. All right. You can right. put it on the board. Uh, we have a... right. That's right. You want me to take this down then? It is best to put it on the screen for your Zoom audience. So, Elizabeth, if you have it, yes, you can. please share. Thank you. Well, while she pulls that up, the, the application that's before you tonight is a request for a 50-foot frontage lot. Right. Uh, the property in question being 165 Summer Street. Uh, the lot itself is in the R1 zoning district. Um, it's in the Water Resource yeah. Protection District. Um, it's approximately 139,822 square feet in overall size, this property. Um, there's an existing home. There's an existing home uh, right here, number 165 yeah. Summer Street. Um, the property was previously divided a number of years ago um, by this line right here that you see. Um, and also, interestingly enough, the town line, the town of Norwell and the town of Situate uh, bisects this lot right here. Okay. So, so just to, are you looking to make the most basic question is, are you looking to maintain lot one and lot two or two lots? Or are you looking to merge the two lots effectively into one? Lot? We're looking to make one new buildable lot as shown as lot two on this plan. Okay, and that encompasses? Lot two encompasses this area here, okay? Yeah. Uh, lot two is in size more than two times the upland area. It's 94,115 square feet in size total. 80,262 square feet of that is upland land area. Lot two also has frontage on Summer Street on the left side of the plan there. The frontage along Summer Street is 117.47 feet. Okay. So this was one lot that you're trying to divide. Again, I'm just- I'm it, was, it was a lot with a house on it that had a separate parcel of land right. so that effectively is merged because they're owned by the same owner. And, and are you trying to change the boundaries now so there will be a different lot one and a different lot two. That's correct. Okay, that's what I was trying that's to correct. understand. You're, you're moving because again, the dotted and the, the lines are a little difficult. So, so you're moving, you're basically moving the lot lines around out of this merged parcel, these two parcels that were merged because of common ownership. Correct. Got it. That so, makes it much so this lot one is a fully compliant zoning lot. We would not be in front of the zoning board for lot one will go to the planning board seeking an A and R endorsement to recreate those lot lines. We're seeking the approval of the zoning board only for lot two as a 50 foot frontage lot. And you may ask, why are you asking for a 50 foot frontage lot when we have an excess of hundred feet of frontage? Sure. We have more than 40,000 square feet of land area. And the reason is, is with a conventional lot in situate, you need a lot width of 100 feet from the road all the way back to where the house gets built. And we can't maintain that. At this minimum point, 
we choked down to about 94 feet wide. So with a 50 foot special permit lot, you're allowed to have a minimum of 50 feet of frontage maintained 50 feet back as long as you have twice the land area. So we meet all of that criteria. That's why we're seeking the special permit on lot two only. And you haven't set the house. So we're assuming that the house on lot two, right, will be conforming as to all setbacks. Yes, the house on lot two would be conforming to all setbacks. Um, we've shown a graphic location of where it would be, but we don't have an actual footprint at this point. Okay. All right. That was super helpful. Um, and again, on this plan that I have in my hand, it's the solid line. Those fins. It's the bold solid line. It's the bold solid line. Correct. Right. Not the thin solid line, which is the old. Yes. yes. Okay. Got it. Sure. Um, Bob. Uh, no real questions. I assume there's a couple of more steps, as, as Greg said. Getting A and R from the planning board and uh, uh, deciding on and, get, and getting permission for access to lot two, which doesn't cross the wetlands area. That that was going to be that is actually my real real question on this, which is how are you getting into lot two when the summer street the bench, a good portion of the summer street frontage looks like it's in wetlands sure that that was clear for us sure so backing up one step this is our first step in a multi-step sure. process um, after we hopefully receive your approval we would have to go to the planning board in both norwell and the planning board right. in situate to seek both of their approvals uh, the answer regarding the access Access is going to be over an existing driveway to 165 Summer Street, which is in the town of Norwell. Norwell allows by right common driveways mm -hmm. um, up to 100 feet in length. So you'll see our intention is to come in with a common driveway right here through lot one, through lot one, and then an easement to get back to the back portion of um, lot two where you would get built the house. So no, no curb cut and situation. No curb cut and situation. Uh, all right. Uh, anything else about at this point? I'll open it up. Comment, public commentary in the room first. Um, sure, David, I'll speak to the again. Um, actually, I don't think these two lots have merged. I think they're actually just modifying the plan that they had because the plan, original plan was put on record. This is a better lot than what was originally approved. I do think that they have two separate lots. Okay. Um, yes, ma'am, name and address for the record, please. Uh, Amy Spencer Forrest, 159 Summer Street. May I ask that you, um, point out the driveway access as well as the lot lines from the other side so that those of us in the audience can see it very briefly. Oh, because you were standing. I need to apologize on that. That's okay. Yeah. So this bold line right here represents the proposed lot line toward the existing house. Okay. The existing house stays. This here becomes the new back lot, lot two. Um, with a new home being constructed somewhere in this vicinity. Right now, serving 165, there are two curb cuts. The driveway is kind of a horseshoe-shaped driveway. Our intention is to close off the driveway closer to Situate and to utilize the driveway further into Norwell as the common driveway, which will split off to the house out back and continue straight to the existing homes. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, commentary questions from the folks online. Not the end. Yeah. Um, 
So any comment vis-a-vis -vis Mr. Bjorkman's <coughs> comment, or any any comment by the applicant on Mr. Bjorkman's comment, and whether these two lots have merged, and whether you even think merger is necessary in light of the process you're going to go through to get the lot clients redrawn. They are, as you said, under common ownership, so I assume you can get that done through a transaction. But yes. Um, so this is all, basically, all you're asking for us to do at this point in light of the process, and Bob, please correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, is to approve basically this plan, assuming everybody else that needs to approve this plan approves this plan. In an oversimplification group. In an oversimplification <laughs> right. we're, we're asking you to approve lot two right. as a 50 foot frontage uh, lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Assuming assuming lot two can come and warn into existence to whatever other uh, mechanisms you need to accomplish that, right? Because if you want separate title to lot two, right? You're going to need the, the, the easements and, and all of that in place. Correct. Okay. Um, any more questions? Yes, ma'am. Please okay. name, name and address for the record. Trace got at 161 Summer Street. Just wanted to clarify the easements are on 165. No other properties in that area. Correct. Only on 165. Thank you. That's what it shows, but that's a good question. Um, okay. Um, on that, then. From my standpoint, it seems relatively straightforward. Um, on the application of, of uh, Adams Equity Partners, uh, Tara, uh, Jeff, Alicia, Armbar, Jalisi, and Harris, from the Eastway Situate, requesting the permit finding uh, in accordance with MGL 48, Section 6, Section 6.2b of the City of Bond Bylaw, and on any other relief the Board of Gifted Grant to create Lot 2, a, uh, a 50, uh, a so-called 50-foot frontage lot shown as lot two on the enclosed North engineering plan dated January 17, 2024. Um, and again, this is a, a finding, so uh, uh, finding permit. Um, but I think other than that, I think there's not, uh, I, I move that we, Grant the request. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, you guys write something up? Yeah, I'll give a look at it. Yeah. Thanks very much. Yeah, this was, I mean, we did all the right steps, right? It was lot twice the size, 50 foot, not introducing curb cuts. So it's pretty really good. good. But the, you got you guys some other hoops to jump through to make it happen. So good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we will go to our fourth application of Kathy and Frank J. Nelson, Nine Collier Road, requesting a special permit signing in accordance with the NGO Chapter 48, Section 6, Section 810.2 of the City of Young Boys bylaws, and or any other relief the Board of Appeals may grant to allow the raise and reconstruction of a pre existing non conforming single family dwelling at Nine Collier Road. Uh, name and address for the record, one more. The record, Gregory Morris, registered engineer, Morris Engineering, representing the property owners, Kathy and Frank Nelson, who are attending via Zoom tonight. Also with us in the audience is the architect for the project, Alyssa Jones. We're before you tonight seeking a special permit in accordance with zoning bylaw section 810.2 and Mass General Law chapter 48, section 6 finding for the raise and rebuild of a home located at 9 Collier Road. Nine Collier Road being out in the third cliff neighborhood. Uh, the property is in the R3 residential zoning district. It is abutted on the north, south, and west sides by developed single family homes. It fronts on the Atlantic Ocean to the east. The existing home at the site was built originally in 1890, although it went through significant renovations in the early 90s. Uh, the existing home is approximately 2,864 square feet. 
The lot itself conforms with lot area. The lot is large for the neighborhood. It's 19,491 square feet. But the non-conformities out there with respect to lot frontage, the lot has 19.75 feet of frontage where 100 is typically required. The house, how it's currently built is 38.97 feet of lot width where 100 is typically required. The front yard setback exists at 16.8 where 30 is the requirement. In the side yards, the left side yard exists at zero feet and the right side yard at 22 feet. The proposal here is to take down the existing structure in its entirety and construct a new one in its place. It will be a new single family residence. It's largely in the same location, although we've pulled it back from the street um, and extended it a little further to the north. The new home is larger in size. It's 4,822 square feet, which represents a 68.3% increase. With respect to the nonconformities, we obviously don't change the frontage of the lot, but the width is more compliant where the house is positioned as 64 and a half versus the existing 38.9. The front yard setback is brought into compliance, the existing being at 16.8. Our proposal is 36.1 for front yard setback. Our side yards on the left hand side are in further compliance although still non-conforming, existing at zero, we're bringing the house to a five foot side yard setback. And the right side existing at 22, we are reducing to 16 feet, which does fully comply with the side yard being an eight foot requirement in the district. Uh, we're seeking a special permit and finding. Uh, we feel it's in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. There are homes of similar size and similar setbacks. We haven't created any new non-conformities. We've corrected a non-conformity. We're further back than the existing home uh, sits today. Turn it over to you. All right, uh, first question to the board. Front questions. Bob, on the very um, Question on the garage, Greg, is it structurally connected to the house as it's now constructed? The house right now? Yeah. In other words, is, is the garage an integral part of the house? Not a separate thing. It's, it's attached to the house. The reason I ask that is that's that's the uh, encroachment on the side yard setback. And I would have a question if it weren't the house encroaching on the side yard setback. Um, I I think I would hesitate to be positive about further encroachment that's shown with these sort of jobs along that property line. Uh, you know, when I looked at this plan, not having a floor plan, of course, um, it seemed like it would be relatively easy to reconfigure the footprint so that that, uh, that encroachment wasn't necessary. Obviously, I leave that to the architect, but there's a couple of things that are happening. One is the encroachment itself, and the other is the proximity to the property line of the proposed building and drainage issues. Um, I see a stormwater basin just to the left of that property line, which means that's a lower area. It seems to go right up and abut the, uh, the dividing line between the two properties. I know we get, especially for the rainy uh, sort of period that we've had, we get in our office um, several calls a week, lot of butters agreed by stormwater runoff from adjacent properties either during construction or adjacent properties that have been recently constructed and, and regraded so that uh, those most people calling feel that though they're getting a lot more stormwater than they typically get, whether it's in their yards or in their basements. Uh, I'd like to see all possible measures taken in construction and design of this project to prevent that kind of phone call uh, coming from the haze up the street. So that's that's basically my problem. 
uh, I just took a look online at the pictures that were provided with the listing. This property sold fairly recently within the past year. Uh, the garage certainly is attached to the house. It's a, okay. it's a part of the house. Uh, yeah, it's very fair question. We, again, this is the first step of many that we'll have to do. Um, we will, and we have filed, I believe, with the Conservation Commission. We're going to have a public hearing process with them. Um, drainage will be a, a large topic of concern with the Conservation Commission. Um, typically, we're putting infiltration structures in. Typically, we're infiltrating roof dry wells. Um, I would expect all of that with the Conservation system. Uh, questions from the people in the room. Yes, this is Trina. Name and address for the record. Corey Hayes, um, Corey Gallagher. Um, I just wanted to just make a quick statement. Uh, as you know, we're just about ours to the north. Uh, we have no um, issue with the home the way that it is laid out, um, with the exception of one request. Given the extreme closeness to our house, which gives us fire hazard concern when we went up there. Um, we asked the board to consider a condition to put in um, that the mechanics for the home, such as like the generator and the AC units, not be placed on the north or northwest end of the new home, so that they would be right under and next to our house. So. Um. We comment. We would be fine with that. Okay. Good to know. So, uh, um, um, I mean, I think we'll. It's all there. I, I think online. I don't know if you want to agree to that quite yet. I think we'll agree to meeting the required setbacks for the AC units and the generator, but I'm not sure if you want to promise we are going to be really good. Um, okay. Okay. So we have something we have we have a request, right? You can have a approve the condition. You want to know. I can, can can we come back to that one if you have any additional comments? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. But I just throwing that out there. Yep. Up front, right. Um, any comments on um, um, from the folks online? Yeah. Okay. Um, if you guys want to, if you guys want to caucus, I'm actually okay with continuing this to the end. Um, of today, so I'll give you a little time to discuss that and see if, if that's something that we can accomplish. Because again, the extent we can help some folks out. Um, obviously, this is a big improvement from a fire hazard standpoint to where it was. It was right on the property line. Now it's five feet away. That being said, we, we all are aware of what has happened down by the water with uh, houses being close together and fires. Um, anything we can, do, we can do to avoid that, generally speaking, I think it's a good thing. Uh, so, uh, why don't you guys? So, I will move that we continue this to the end of the meeting so that there can be a discussion uh, amongst yeah. the audience. Thank you. All in favor? George, sure. George, excuse me. Can I just input? Yeah. And we close this yep. part of the discussion. Um, there is a building code requirement that yep. any portion of the house which is within five feet of the property line. I don't know if this is or not. I see one dimension that says five feet. Um, maybe that's maybe that's the idea to be five feet or more away. Uh, otherwise it would need to be uh, the wall itself would need to be fire rated. Well, that may or may not come into play here when we right. say if the wall is within five feet. It's got to be inside five feet. Inside five, right. If it's, if it's exactly five feet, which is what I'm seeing here. Uh, but I thought I'd move it. Okay. Our proposal is five feet or greater along that entire line. Right. Okay. Which would not, under the building code, require a fire rate. Or That's correct. Okay. But that is something that we can think of. Why don't you guys discuss it? All right. We 
we will continue this till the end. We will listen to the other application, and I'm happy to hear your proposal. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we'll or, or, you know, whatever you want. Okay. Um, okay. So we'll continue okay. that to the end of the meeting. Um, and then we will challenge. Second. Uh, and we will go to the fifth and final application of Michael and Mary Phipps Millet, 12 Forest Park Drive, Vero Beach, Florida, to their agent, Paul Mirabito, who's probably online, uh, a PLS Ross Engineering Company, 683 Main Street, Barwell, for the special permit money in accordance with NGL 48, Section 6, and 8.2B of the Citrus Loan Bylaw, um, to allow the raising of the truck with a pre existing master form. Single family dwelling at 62 Gilton Road. Yes. I uh, spoke with Paul earlier this afternoon. He has a hearing before the historical commission at seven o'clock uh, at the library. Yep. They promised they'd get up, get him out in 10 minutes. Uh, they obviously <laughs> have not. So, uh, so that's all I know. I understood. understood. <laughs> understood. He, was, he was hopeful that he was going to be here on time. And it is not his fault he is not here. We appreciate that. Um, the historical commission is going to take hours along. Um, okay. Well, um, if he is not here un until after we hear the fourth application and they come back to us, um, we will um, uh, we will continue this in the next uh, the next meeting. Now, but we will wait for him. For a few minutes. Um, other business. So, uh, other business. Uh, we can move on to the other business, um, which is not the public commentary, but it is for the public to hear about it. Um, we had an approval of meeting minutes from the. Was it remind me? I have the sheet. Uh, November, from November. November. 16th. November um, mm -hmm. I read them. I'm fine with them. Um, I will uh, make a motion that we approve the November meeting minutes. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Approved. And then we had four, hold on, CBA decisions. Yes. Oops. And on my sheet. The list them? Yeah, why well, I had these sent them and I had them, I can't find them here. Two Ocean Avenue. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so what? I, I, I move that we approve um, the two Ocean Avenue uh, CBA decisions. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Fabulous. 70 Glades. I move we approve the 70 Glades Road. CBA decision. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 74B Glades. 74B Glades. I move that we approve the 74B Glades Road decision. Second. All in favor? Aye. And finally, 74 and 74C, please. So I move that we approve the final decision, 74, 74C, please, Rod. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Those are all approved. Okay. Terrific. Thank you very much. Uh, on that note, we will, we're not going to adjourn. We're just going to take a pause until. Either Mr. Minagiro can get here. So, was it for Central Avenue today? So, 326 Central Avenue was continued. Oh, I thought it was continued until this week. It was, and we had a request for a continuance till the 8th meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah.
I don't know. So that was, well. And it was a request that we move 30 days then short of the time for the decision. Uh, assuming the applicant is able to make it the April meeting before the rest of the nomination meeting. So I move, I, I move that we reduce the uh, the time limit by the second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, thank, so thank you. Thank you. The, the thank point. you. Thank you. So Mary Vito. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see you. We are happy you can make it. We are happy that the planning board allowed you. To, I mean, the uh, so the historical yeah. commission allowed you to leave. Uh, <laughs> and if you're here with us now, all right. So we have in front of us 62 Gilson Road. This is the raise and reconstruct, right? Yes. All right. This is the uh, I can pull the raise and reconstruct and tell them only like one minute. Let's. Uh, this house was built in 1940. It's the family, the fifth family, for several generations. The proposal to raise and reconstruct the kind of site plan we submitted to show the existing condition, the existing health and the shed. And it's proposed to uh, reconstruct see the family dwelling, the same lot. The uh, shed would be removed. And the house meets all, uh, all the required setbacks. The, the lot is undersized at 5,348 square feet, and the frontage is only the, it's only 60 feet. But again, the structure has been designed to be placed on the lot to the side of the rear yard setbacks conforming. The front yard setback on the current home is 12.2. We're proposing to move it back to 12.3. So we have a non-conforming lot as the area width and frontage. We have an existing home, which is non-conforming at the front yard setback. Um, all the other setbacks uh, are conforming. They will continue to be conforming, although moved. They will also propose to increase the growth floor area by 237%. That's a two-story home now, and they want to be two stories. Stack it up. Uh, okay. Uh, now resource protection. Not in the floodplain, which is good. Um, so really, no new non-conformities. Um, which is good. Uh, okay. Let's see your friends a lot with. Well, and the existing friends, right? In the front yard setback, front yard setback which isn't really, it's only changing. It's, I mean, it's improving by the right? Um, and then everything else is going to stay conforming. Um, so a little out, a little up. All right, question from the board. Bob. No, it looks very straightforward to me. I can't see any problems right at all. It, it, it grows in the one direction, it can, the two directions can grow, right? You can go in one direction, you can go up. It's going to do that. Um, anybody in the audience? In the room? Anybody online? Yeah. Okay. So, on. So, on the application of Michael and Mary. Full of tips, no Salt Forest Park Avenue will be Florida. Either at uh, Agent Paul Maravito, PLS, Ross Engineering Company, City of the PD, Normal Mass, requesting a special permit finding in point with NGL 48 section 6, section 810.2B, it's two bylaws, and any other relief to awarding a grant to allow the race and construction with pre existing not conform single family dwellings to Gilson Road. Uh, I move that we approve the proposed race and reconstruct pursuant to the plan by. Uh, grading consulting data January 18th, 2024, uh, and that the board find uh, the proposed plan introduces no new non conformities and to the extent that it testifies any existing non conformities those are not substantially more negative. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, on that good time, on that perfect time. 
Uh, on that note, we will recall call again the fourth application is Kathy A and Frank B. Nelson, nine Chicago Road, Citrus Mass, discussing the custom current finding in accordance with Bill 48, section 6, in section 8.10.2 of the Citrus Zoning Bylaws. And there are any other reviews to the Board of the PSM branch below the registry of the previous non conforming single family dwelling at nine Collier Road, Citrus Mass. Name and address for the record one more time. Gregory Morse, registered engineer, Morse Engineering, representing the applicant. Um, the comment was made from the abutter Hayes regarding locations of AC units and a generator. Uh, we went out in the hallway, we looked at the location where they would be desired on the site. Uh, what they were looking at is here for the generator location, which is the northeasternmost corner of the house. I would count. Know, Flip this around to the northeast most corner of the house for the generator. And then so the near where the patio where you have the patio? Not on, on the patio, but in not the on the patio, but off the north right. end of the house there. Okay. Right. Which is um, approximately from the lot line. Approximately 20 feet from the lot line. Okay. So it's well inside of the building envelope, which is eight feet. Okay. We'd add that that entire wing of the house there is compliant with respect to the zoning setback of eight feet for the lot line. The location of the AC unit um, that we'd like to propose is right in here. Again, that is compliant with an eight foot setback to the um, property line for the AC units at that location as well. So if, um, if we do this with an AC unit at least eight feet from the lot line and um, a generator at least 20 feet from the lot line? Would, from your standpoint, would that be acceptable? The AC units, eight feet, certainly. The um, generator, I can grab my scale. I left it in the hallway. Just to double yeah, check, 20 up. foot. Yeah. Uh, it certainly is 15 feet. Right. It's, a, it's at least 15 feet. All I right. can tell you that. You know what? I'm okay with that. That's, I, I mean, that's within the, 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 that's within all the required setbacks, right? So on by right, theoretically, you could have gone, you know, because the house was situated differently. You could go all right, so any other comments? Beautiful. So I love when we can make everybody happy. Um, um, so I move that on the fourth application of Kathy A. Uh, and Frank J. Nelson, 9 Collier Road, Citrus, Mass, requesting a special permit finding in accordance with NGL 48, Section 6, and Section 810.2 of the Citrus Zoning Bylaws. Uh, and I am the Willie the Board of Appeal and May Grant uh, to allow the raise and reconstruction of the previous and non-performing single family dwelling on 9 Collier Road. Uh, I move that we approve the proposed rate, raise and reconstruct. Pursuant, pursuant to the plan and Morse Engineering data, is that what I want to make sure I have the right one, right? 118 2024, as revised on February 7, 2024, uh, with the condition that the, a, the proposed AC unit be situated at least eight feet uh, from the, what would we call that, the northwest lot, lot line? Yes. All right. And that the proposed generator uh, be situated at least 15 feet from said proposed, from said northwest lot line. And that um, the proposed rate, raise and reconstruct introduces no new non conformities. Uh, and uh, to the extent that it intensifies any existing non conformities, those non conformities are not transferring more than the mayor. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Good evening. Great working with you guys. Thank you. Yeah, that way. It's in the file. file. Yep. We'll put it in the file. It'll be in the opinion. Um, Elizabeth, any other business? Sounds like we. I believe we have done it for the evening. Uh, motion to adjourn. Thank you. Is adjourned.